Hey everyone, welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. In this video, we're going to talk about the three absolutely essential skills that you need to have as a data scientist. So without further ado, let's just dive straight into it. The first absolutely essential skill for data scientists is math and stats. Really, data scientists is fundamentally about math and stats. You simply implement these concepts using code. Some of the most basic but very important things to know as a data scientist are things like experimentation techniques, calculating required sample sizes, and confidence intervals, things like that. Many companies these days are becoming more and more data-driven. And what this means is that there is also an emphasis on running experiments and using data to make decisions. Unlike the olden days when people made decisions based on their spidey senses. Just kidding, I don't mean to offend anyone here, but basically many companies these days are starting to be more objective and rely less on intuition. For example, if you're trying to decide whether to ship a feature you build, you may want to run an experiment to see if shipping the feature has a statistically significant impact on the metric that you care about. You need to have a thorough understanding of experimentation techniques, read statistics, to be able to correctly design the experiment, determine what sample sizes need to be, how long to run the experiment for, and also how to interpret the resulting data. Or if you're forecasting sales, you may build a model with specific features you know impacts forecasting, or use a model that someone else has built that suits your purpose to make a prediction. This is also rooted in math and stats. And speaking of models, this is a nice segue into machine learning. Machine learning in its essence is math. I always say that if you want to use machine learning, you can absolutely just import a library or module that someone else has made and you can get quite good results doing this, provided you choose the correct model, the correct features, and optimize it correctly. However, if you really want to understand machine learning and be good at optimizing your model, or even potentially creating your own model, you do need to understand the math behind it, mostly calculus and stats. Also, if you want to be able to read research papers, it will be very difficult for you to do so without understanding the math. So if you're freaking out right now because you're terrified of math, you may not believe me, but you, if you take things step by step, it's a skill you can learn just like anything else. I honestly used to be terrified of math and just thought I was really bad at math and panic every time there was math. But I realized that once you have a good learning resource that teaches you not just how to do math problems correctly, which is a lot of times like how schools teach you, but actually break down the math into manageable chunks and understand the reasoning behind the math, things will actually start to click and you realize it's really not so bad. Like it actually makes sense, you know? So if you're looking to learn the math and stats that data scientists use on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as the math behind machine learning algorithms, you should check out Data IQ's free learning resource linked in the description. The learning material is super beginner friendly and has lots of examples and pictures, which if you have the attention span of a goldfish like me, helps a lot. Now, second absolutely essential skill for data science to know is SQL. There's an urban myth that SQL and relational databases are dead and have been taken over by NoSQL. So SQL, relational databases, and NoSQL, they all have to do with storing and querying data. A relational database is a collection of data items with predefined relationships between them, and they're organized as a set of tables with columns and rows. These tables are often linked to each other, and SQL is the language used to query. NoSQL, on the other hand, which I must give credit to the name, literally means no SQL. <laughs> it's a database that stores information in a non-tabular form. The primary advantages of a no SQL database is flexibility. You can store data in a variety of ways and it has flexible schemas, different types of data, and you can also scale it easily with large amounts of data and high user loads. There's a lot of ways of querying no SQL databases, but what people like to use these days are generally programmatic languages like Python, JavaScript, and Java. I'll link some more resources in the description description in case you're interested in learning more about different databases. So although NoSQL is becoming more popular nowadays, relational databases and SQL as querying language is not going anywhere. In fact, to prove my point, most data science interviews will explicitly test you on SQL, even if they don't test you on NoSQL and other programmatic languages. So do not scoff at SQL. In industry, including big tech, most data is still stored in relational databases, and data scientists spend a lot of time using SQL to query the data to do analyses and projects. I feel like there's often this misconception that data scientists spend most of their time building fancy ML models and answering questions using advanced mathematics. And yes, sometimes you have to do that, but really the majority of answers that you need to answer can be done using SQL. In practice, SQL is probably your first go-to because it is fast and easy, or at least easier than 
and having to go build out a model or something like that. I mean, if you can answer a question faster and easier, why would you use a more complex solution, right? For example, if a product manager wants to know which feature has the biggest opportunity to increase, I don't know, like your user base for a product, for example, you would go and do some sizing using SQL and get them the answer in a day. Instead of being like, yes, let me go make a model weighing in 10 different factors and I will get back to you in a month. You see, if you did that, they will be very unhappy. Also, another point is that if there's a lot of data, SQL is much, much faster than trying to import a data set into Python or something and then doing your analysis there. I personally had really bad time trying to do that and had to do sampling and wait around for ages for the code to run. So yes, know your SQL, it is absolutely essential. And the good news is that SQL is really much easier to learn than languages like Python, Java, or R. Okay, so the third absolutely essential skill you need to have as a data scientist is communication and presentation skills. This is not like a hard skill like the other two, but it's absolutely crucial. One of the biggest mistakes that entry-level data scientists make, like I've made myself before, is for someone to give you a project to do and and then you kind of like go off and do it just to realize later that you didn't actually understand what you're supposed to do. Or you do a project that you're super proud of and then someone just goes like, okay, like, thank you, but so what? And you're like dumbfounded because it's a super cool project that you made using this super cool model. But sadly, a super cool model does not translate to helping a company accomplish its goals, so you don't really get any credit for that. Now, let me give you some tips on how to be better at communication and presentation. First tip is to try to understand a problem or project from the perspective of the person who is asking you to do it. Instead of focusing on the technical details about the project, ask yourself instead, why are they asking me to do this? What's the purpose it serves? And this may seem super obvious, but if you don't know why they're asking you that, you can just ask them, what are you going to do with this thing I do? Doing this helps a lot because it provides guidance as you do the project to make sure you stay on track. And another reason why you should always try to understand the reasoning behind an ask is because if the person asking you to do something isn't technical, there's a statistically significant chance that what they're asking you to do may not be the best approach to helping them accomplish their goals. Third tip is to know your audience. If if you're presenting something to non-technical people, they don't really want to know the equations behind your model or project. It's better to just give them a high-level overview of what you did and leave the details in the appendix. I see this mistake very often when data scientists are going off on a tangent about like the really clever thing they did to get the project to work super well, and you can like visibly see the eyes of the audience glaze over. Uh, more on VC these days, people just start turning off their cameras. It's just bad and it makes you feel bad too. So do your research on who your audience is beforehand and make sure to tailor your presentation to the audience. My last tip is also focused on presentation skills. People really like graphs and visualizations because people are visual creatures. So if you tell them that X, Y, and Z are the biggest contributors to revenue, they'll be like, okay, cool, this is quite good. But if you show them a bar graph of the contributions of X, Y, and Z and other contributors, they'll be like, oh wow, this is very exciting. Like seriously, I also learned this from experience. My suggestion is to make things as visual as possible. Throw in the bar charts, the scatter plots, and the heat maps. Just not pie charts, please. Never show a data scientist a pie chart. There is an 80% chance that they'll go off for 30 minutes about how much they hate pie charts. So in conclusion, don't underestimate the importance of communication and presentation skills. These are just as important as the hard skills. Hey, let me also add in a bonus one that I argue is not like absolutely, absolutely crucial, such that you'll be in big trouble and can't be a data scientist, but it is a skill that can really help a lot in fast tracking your data science career. And that is being able to learn new things quickly. Data science is such a fast progressing field with new research, algorithms, and techniques coming out every day. You don't have to learn everything, of course, but it's important to keep up to date on how the field is progressing and maturing. Then you can pick the skills that you think will help you do your job either faster or better. Sometimes your employer may also ask you to learn something new and use it to do something ASAP. For example, during my time at Goldman Sachs, my first task was to manipulate data based on Hadoop and Spark, which are open source frameworks for big data architectures. And in order to do this, I had to learn this programming language called Scala. You see, I knew a bit about big data architectures, but only from a theoretical perspective, because so I've like never actually touched it before. And I definitely have not touched Scala before. So what I had to do is teach myself Scala in the first couple of weeks so I could actually start doing my project. Luckily, I've always been interested 
interested in how to learn things quickly because my favorite activity is procrastinating. So I was able to learn quickly and work on my project. If I wasn't good at learning things though, it could have taken me like a month to start working on the project and my manager would have not been very happy. By the way, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a video on how to learn technical things effectively, especially essential skills for data scientists. Well, that's all I have for you today. Which of these skills do you already have? Which ones do you think you need to work on? Let me know in the comments below. See you guys in the next video.